and we'll, uh, we'll need to be recognized in order to ask a question, and we're going to try to come up at some point. So, first of all, thank you. I'm Sharon Kamrowski. This is my husband, Les. From Kamrowski Road. You want to be right next to me. On top of me. Think I'm happy? Last Wednesday at the meeting, you said, uh, let's see. Well, first, a little cartoon indication here. I want to know why you didn't show that kind of aerial shot. You showed the aerial shots of the places that you were going to, you know, mine in the sand. Why didn't you sh show the aerial shots of all the beautiful water and everything? You showed cartoon figures in a little bitty box of where the frac sand plant was going to be. But now you show a huge sprawling plant. So what's the truth? You said you want to be truthful. Is it a little box? Or is it a big, huge plant? Well, what, what we showed you was the... Uh just what was on the application for the permit. Um, we can provide aerials of what that's going to look like. In fact, we're prepared and we're working on uh, putting together aerials and then uh, showing what that plant will look like on that property. You didn't do the meeting last week. Why weren't you prepared for that? You should show the community. You want the community to be involved. You didn't show the community the actual truth of it, did you? That's not respectful. Sorry if I'm not being respectful right now, but I don't see you being very respectful to those of us. Oh, and you didn't come and introduce yourself to us. Our other neighbors you did, but why not us? Especially since we're the one that's mostly going to be affected by this. Yeah. Um, and I apologize for that. We, we would like to sit down and talk to you. Why didn't right. you three months ago? Instead of just sneaking in and doing this. You're desecrating our land. You're desecrating our lives. Oh, I'm sorry. Please go ahead and answer. Uh, uh, you know, three months ago, we didn't we didn't have the application in. Uh, we weren't that far along in the process. Um, as I said, I, I welcome the opportunity to, to meet with you um, as soon as possible. A little late. <laughs> okay. If seven families are leasing their land for a mine, and you're putting a wash plant up there, why can't you also, since you want to spend all this money to, let's see, redo a bridge on Kamarowski Road? Um, I, Sharon, I think that's going beyond. No, I'm, I'm, no. I'm trying to keep this to what's affecting town of Milton. I want to know. This affects town of Milton. Why can't you put a dry plant up where you do everything else and get a rail spur up there so you don't have to put a dry plant in town of Milton? It's possible to put a rail spur up there. Why? Isn't there because one by Independence? Hills. Because of all the hills between. To get to the Burlington Northern Rail, we'd have to come down right down 88, and it'd be crazy to try to put one right The Sierra Nevadas have a lot of train tracks. Those are hills, those are mountains. Look at how they do it with all the tunnels and everything, too. Okay, let's see. Any other question here? I'll give, you, I'll give you one more, and then okay. we're going to turn it over to someone else. Okay, if I can come back. Thank you, well, thank you yeah. for your time. Uh, gentlemen in the back. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Dick Gordon. I live in Indian Creek. <clears throat> and now you're talking about trying to alleviate the problem of the truck going past the school and possibly putting in a bridge <clears throat> across the swamp. <clears throat> now you're not going to alleviate that problem coming past the school because everything is going to come down 35. Going south, you're still going to have to pass the school to get to your proposed bridge on 88. Mm -hmm. Or are they going to go off on on uh, Red Moon Road and come on Kim Rouse? I I believe, and, and they can answer this probably better than myself, but I believe all of the mines that you have proposed for the use of this plant comes off of 88. No, that's no. not correct. There is one that comes off of, off of off 37. 37. Okay. Yeah, so that's my mm -hmm. point. Is are those trucks going to continue on the uh, uh, Prairie Moon Road and come around and come around? If, if, the bridge, if the bridge would be built, they'd probably come across that way rather than across the Right, but they'd still be going. So you'd have 100, 150 is what's proposed from that line coming by there, as opposed to the 190 and 105 from the other two. They'd basically be cutting it and 
what, about a third, between a third and a half. So is the problem is still going to be there. There will still be some trucks coming by. There. You know, one of the things I guess I'd like to mention too is, you know, I mentioned that the, I'll turn this off, but the, the uh, number of, of trucks that are coming in there, again, are not necessarily the 500 right from the start. Uh, what we'll probably do is they're not all going to come from all the lines at the same time either. <clears throat> so what we would probably do is, is mine one area, uh, maybe two of them, but not all three of them at once until, you know, five, ten years down the road when we can increase the size of the plant. Yeah, I have one other question. Uh, I understand there's a, there's a plant down in Poma. I don't know if that's yours or somebody else's, but what I've heard that they didn't hire any local people to build that plant. Everybody came to Texas to build that plant. I don't know about that because I wasn't involved. So are you going to hire some local contractors to put this facility you know, up? I'm, I'm a contractor and I'm local and I'm helping out right now. So, you know, I would say that, yes, there will local? be some local. I'm not, I, I don't know for sure where all the people are going to come from, but I can tell you that, you know, the people that will be working with us will be from local. I know for a fact um, you both are from Chippewa Falls. You've been involved with the EOG drying plant up there. And when that plant was um, built a year or two ago, every single person that contracted at that plant was from Texas. That's absolutely not true. I was the project director on that plant. Not, not only that, but nowhere in this presentation did I see that this plant was going to be built by local people. Mm -hmm. They're talking about employing local people there's a difference right right but the question was just asked okay. next <laughs> next question oh wayne um at the wednesday meeting ryan introduced himself when in his initial presentation as a real estate developer and he also uh talked about his father ike as a real estate developer i remember that distinctly and i wrote it down and i talked sure. to him afterwards and a real estate developer invests and buys and sets things up and sells it. That's what a developer does. How, how can we believe that you tell us um, things? And how can we actually believe that this, if it all gets set up, if it all gets running, that boom, you sell it to somebody else, we never hear of you again, because you're brand new, you can be in and out. That's what developers do. How can you assure us that wouldn't happen? All your promises, that would be, would be moot, nothing. Uh, I understand I mean, and appreciate what you're saying. I, you know, I can't, uh, I can't predict the future. But developers, but. dealing with, you mean, that's what you folks are real estate developers. Well, they, they they may have a past in that, but they're they're in they want to be in the frac sand business. And you know, I I guess I can't speak for, you know, if if the opportunity came up. Um, but uh, I I think that they, they wanna be here. I, I know that they wanna be here and they want to be, um, as I've said a number of times, respectful of uh, of the community. I don't think yeah. their intent is to build this to sell it. I mean, their intent is to build it, but but you know, quite frankly, if somebody offers enough money, mm -hmm. I don't think anybody's going to say that they won't turn that down. Okay, and then but, one more quick question is: You just said in ten years expand, and everybody here kind of gasped. I guess that never was brought up yet until just now. That's correct. That's scary. You know, and, and people are saying, why weren't we here three months ago? Three months ago, there wasn't even an offer on the property. So at that point in time, it would have been way too much. Thank you. Um, how is the plant dried? What, what do you use to dry it? Is it propane? Liquid propane, correct. Have you worked with the local fire departments? Because my house is in between, you know, the road and the plant. We have not met with the fire department yet, no. Okay, because we have a local volunteer fire department, and it's not that big, and I just, I mean, what happens if it's, that's a lot of propane going into that building, am I not right? It's, 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 a, it's a good question. And, right. and a way to get on that road, I mean, if there's fire trucks that need to come, and, and I've seen the, the firemen that we have fly to the fire station and make their way down there, but I don't think that 
any equipment that we have in the area would be able to put out that type of fire. And then the second question that I have is um, talking about the community and everything else, I think it's important that you know you say that you're going to have um, informational meetings and stuff, but just make sure that, that they're factual and truthful. And then the third question that I have is, how is Brian Iverson um, going to play a part in your business? Because I have a lot of concerns with Brian Iverson and his history. And um, you guys probably know that he's filed bankruptcy numerous times and has left a lot of liabilities. And just built in for the town of Milton to accept you to come in and um, I think we need to know what part of Brian Iverson is going to play in Glacier Sands. Is he going to be up front? Is he going to be a silent partner? He's obviously got some ownership in it. Can you explain Brian Iverson to us and his relationship with Glacier Sands um, in the future with Brian Iverson? I can, I can tell you, yeah. Uh, Brian is a minority owner in Glacier Sands and um, he does a multi multitude of things uh, in you know the future of selling the sand and things like that. Um, um, and as you can see, you know, I'm here tonight to answer the question, and and mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, he's he's doing other things. Um, His biggest role is locating locating sand and then finding the sales. What percentage of the business is he a partner of? That that I don't know. I can, I can, I can get that for you though. I'd like to. I mean, I'd like to see a business plan state and what percentage he owns. Um, what the average job he, what you're going to pay per job. We haven't seen a business plan yet, so I mean, a, a good corporation or a good company has a business plan that's solid and has a future growth with job part, prediction. Part of the, the, the job information, um, and I, I started to tell you that um, as uh, Carl Dooley is putting together this next meeting, mm -hmm. um, I was expecting a phone call from him today, but I'm going to provide to him the information on types of jobs and wage scale for those those parts of jobs and so that'll be available. At his last meeting did he state how many people could actually fill these jobs in Buffalo County that are unemployed right now? Did Carl? Mm -hmm. Actually well Carl didn't do the presentation. Was anybody else at that meeting? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. Okay. And they, they really set up from the last meeting what I took away from it was the past and leading up to the present economic status, if you will, of Buffalo County. And then we'll move into numbers of jobs that would be added, I, I would guess, from the proposed uh, mining frac sand operations. One, one interesting.